Good morning everyone, I hope you're all well. I'm recording this on Sunday and I was going to go and put my shirt and tie on but as it's a very special day today, it's the first day of the Grand Prix season, I'm wearing my lucky Lewis Hamilton top which I'll wear all day and I'll be watching the race later so excuse how I look. And today I'm going to talk to you about um, the U value, P-R-O-U, we're up to unique unicorns and I'm going to tell you about a real story about a singer called Susan Boyle who is properly unique she doesn't look like a singer she doesn't talk like a singer she doesn't act like a famous person in any way she's just herself um, but through being herself and being special and unique she's got a long way in life and is now very famous and very successful so this um, unique unicorn that I want to tell you all about appeared on Britain's Got Talent back in 2009 and was instantly made very very famous but the thing with Britain's Got Talent is it doesn't always let you know whether or not someone's going to be very good or not very good. And so this person appeared on the screen in a way that made most of the audience and the judges think that they weren't going to be brilliant. So the very first shot that we see of this person is her sitting at the back of the room on her own eating a sandwich. Before she even got to speak, it made it look like she was going to be, I don't know, a bit of a disaster. The people who made the programme had her standing on her own, looking like she got their friends, looking like she didn't really know what she was doing. So Ant and Depp were really nice to her and they chatted away, but the only things we were really told about her was that she'd never had a proper job and she lived at home with her cats. So the audience were waiting, the hall was packed full. Um, and the thing is with Britain's Got Talent, somebody who works on the programme has normally seen the acts before they arrive. So someone will have seen Susan Boyle singing this morning and decided that she should go onto the main stage. But the judges have not seen her and they don't know if she's any good or not. So she arrives on the stage, full of confidence, telling everybody she's gonna do a super job and her exact words are she's going to make the audience rock and clearly doesn't care about how she looks or how she sounds or what she says. So Susan began to speak. Um, I think the occasion got to her and she looked at all those people out in front of her and started to panic a little bit and forgot what she was going to say and this made the audience laugh a little bit with her and um, when Simon asked her a question about where she was from she couldn't remember the word that she wanted to describe it and got even more flustered and it began to look like this was going to be a bit of a disaster in terms of an audition. When Simon Carl asked Susan how old she was and she said she was 47 she then got a bit nervous and wiggled her hips at him which didn't impress him at all and it looked like this was going to be a very short audition with Simon saying no way you're no good off you go. Even Anton Deck seemed to fear the worst. So they carried on talking and Simon was nice to her, he was polite, and asked what she wanted to do um, as a result of this audition, what was the dream, and she said she wanted to become a professional singer. And at this point the audience are really getting drawn in that she's not going to be very good and they're rolling their eyes and laughing at each other. And Simon asked her why she's not been successful and she says because she's never been given the chance. But she's a unique unicorn. She does what she does. She doesn't care what other people think. She's just going to sing. That's what she does. She then announces what she's going to sing, A Dream, A Dream from Les Miserables. And everyone looks a little bit worried because this is a heck of a song to get right. So she sang. And the judges were amazed. Ant even turns to the audience and says, you didn't expect that, did you? Because you knew that everybody thought she was going to be rubbish. And the more she sang, the more confident she got, the more the crowd got into it, the more amazed the judges were. And by the end, everyone was standing on their feet, screaming and cheering. Halfway through the song, she hits a note that makes Amanda Holden stand to her feet and applaud. And Ant and Deck turn to the camera with their mouths open. Simon Carl was completely blown away. He knew that he was watching something very, very special. She even made him smile. 
By the end of the song, everyone was on their feet and Susan Boyle was just in a world of her own, singing from her heart and just being herself. And because she's unique and nobody is like her and it doesn't bother her, at the end, you won't believe this, she just turns around and walks off. The judges brought her back and made their comments and Simon tried to pretend that he thought all along that she was going to be brilliant. But at the end of the day, she was just herself and being just herself was more than enough. And it's the hardest thing to do if you're a unique unicorn that you ignore other people, you be what you are and that will get you through life. Unique unicorns are what they what it says. They are one of a kind. There aren't people like them and we need them in the world. You must watch the video that goes with this. So there you go. That's Susan Boyle. Um, but that's not really the end of the assembly because what I'd really like you to do is watch the other link that I've put on Dojo and Susan Boyle's first ever audition on X Factor and just go through those pictures that I've shown you and you can see the story unravel and the reactions that people have the very first time that they hear her sing. Enjoy your week. Stay safe. See you soon.